If aloe vera can cause cancer, why is it so widely used in skincare? Why have we not woken up to this? And why has it been used for thousands of years by ancient civilizations to help with skin concerns? There's been some trending research going around saying that aloe vera causes cancer, that people shouldn't be using it, and I wanna break that down with science. If this is true, then why is aloe vera so widely used in skincare? Why has it been for thousands of years? You know, for sunburns, for irritation, etc. And, you know, did we learn something new and have we been wrong this entire time? You see, in science, we always learn new things and we have to change our opinions and change our actions based on those things that we learn. And recently, aloe vera was listed under Prop 65 of California's Dangerous Substances because yes, there are studies showing that aloe vera, when ingested, could increase gastrointestinal cancer in rats. But therein lies the key. Oral consumption, basically what we eat, is extraordinarily different than topical application and what we put on the skin. And although in science animal models are used and then we test those further in humans, to say that something absolutely causes something in an animal doesn't always translate to humans. And although we have anatomical similarities, we don't function identically. Um, I hope I don't look like a rat or a mouse. I have been called a horse though. I guess that's for you to decide. <laughs> so is aloe vera, when applied topically, dangerous? And is it different if it's formulated into a product versus if it's just taken out of the plant and applied to skin? Well, the answer lies in skin science and in history, and that's what we're gonna dig into. We're working with Holika Holika to discuss the science behind aloe vera in skincare products. And when a product at the grocery store claims that it has aloe vera in it, how you should actually turn and learn those products so that you know what to look for and understand what's going on, but also use this as an example of why natural is not always better. Specifically talking about compounds that are found in plants, such as natural pesticides or ingredients that are meant to keep bugs and insects away from eating the plant, but when applied topically to our skin could actually cause irritation. Yet when those are formulated into skincare products, certain pieces of that natural plant are extracted or taken out and removed so that there isn't irritation, so that hydrating, soothing, and actual helpful formulations can be created. Because you see, when stabilized properly into a skincare formulation, aloe is still one of the best and most soothing ingredients that you can find. Aloe vera has actually been used by ancient civilizations for thousands of years. And the words aloe vera actually come from Arabic and Latin. Aloa in Arabic actually means shining bitter substance, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And in Latin, vera means true. There's a research paper that I found online that claimed Alexander the Great and even Christopher Columbus used this aloe vera plant to treat the wounds of their soldiers. The first time aloe was referenced was back in medicine, back in 1655. That's a lot of years ago. And although aloe vera, again, orally, has actually been used as a laxative ever since the 1800s, it was in the 1930s that people actually started to use it on skin, specifically used for radiation dermatitis, or skin irritation from radiation. Aloe vera is a cactus, but inside it actually has many different layers as well as many different compounds and ingredients within those layers. As noted, some of these can be super helpful, super healing, they can have antioxidant and soothing properties, but there are others that can be irritating to the skin, such as aloe latex. Each aloe leaf is composed of three layers, but there are mainly two layers that meet the eye. The inner clear gel is actually where 99% of the aloe gel or the water within the aloe plant and the hydration is kept. It's filled with lipids, vitamins, amino acids, glucomannans, and a whole bunch of these ingredients that can be very soothing and hydrating to skin. The middle layer is that aloe latex. It's kind of like this sap, and if you've ever applied aloe vera directly, that's the sticky stuff that's left behind. This has anthraquinones and glycosides, which again, these anthraquinones can be irritating to some people. The outer layer protects the plant, and it's actually only 15 to 20 cells thick. This works to synthesize synthesize carbohydrates and proteins so that the plant can live and grow, and it also protects it from things such as bugs and pesky little insects and invaders. Because there are so many vitamins, enzymes, minerals, fatty acids, and lipids within this plant, they can do a lot of great things for the skin, specifically being anti-inflammatory, having antioxidant properties, and really being healing and soothing to things like a sunburn. Aloe vera has been shown to help promote wound healing, and in aloe vera, there's actually a natural amount of salicylic acid. The research that I found online says that aloe vera also contains around 3% saponins, which can actually have antiseptic properties. There are around six antiseptic agents that are found in aloe vera naturally, which is why it can be so beneficial when it comes to minor irritation, to dryness, to cuts and small wounds on the skin. These are things like phenols, like sulfur, like salicylic acid, which we just discussed. There's urea, there's nitrogen, and all of these can have a small effect on 
on killing bacteria, funguses, and, you know, different viruses that might want to try to get into skin. So because of all this, applying aloe vera to the skin can actually be soothing as well as being protective. So many people hearing about the benefits of this aloe vera want to do good things to their skin, so they run out to their garden and they want to make a DIY concoction that contains aloe vera. Now while this sounds good in theory, this might not be the best idea. Plants produce natural pesticides. Did you know that caffeine is technically a pesticide? Caffeine is my favorite pesticide. But plants have to do this to stop bugs and different insects from eating them. Although these things are natural, they can harm us if we ingest them improperly or if we apply them improperly to skin. The other thing is that if you will run out to your garden and get some aloe vera, that's going to be very different than your grandma's garden with aloe vera who lives on the other side of the country. Because of the growing conditions, because of the weather, because of the nutrients and the minerals minerals within the soil and what's available, these plants can grow different. And that means that one aloe vera plant is not going to be the same as the other, and someone who's doing DIY skincare might have a different skin reaction based on the different plants that they pick. Some of the negative side effects that have been reported with natural aloe vera use just from the garden have been things like redness, stinging, burning, itching, irritation, contact dermatitis, and even generalized dermatitis in some sensitive individuals. There have been some allergic reactions reported, and again, these are mainly because of those anthraquinones. Um, those are substances that some people are reactive to. And especially if you've ever had an allergic reaction to aloe or even, you know, things like onions before, you probably don't want to use aloe in your skincare products. And especially with aloe, if you're going to try to do something naturally, you still always want to make sure that you patch test first, just the way you would with a chemical peel in skincare. Even the natural stuff can have big impact. Patch testing is the safe thing to do. A study that I found kind of looked at the phototoxicity or light toxicity of applying aloe to, you know, skin. They did this in mice and they found that there was a, quote, significantly increased histopathologically determined squamous cell neoplasm in some mice. Basically, it's irresponsible to say this is going to cause cancer in mice, but when this was applied to the mice's skin for about a year, there were some changes that could be seen as concerning. And again, this happens with many herbal products. They were taking the full leaf, which included the latex, which got them these results. And generally, when this is formulated in skincare, things like that latex and definitely any harmful compounds are taken out. Specifically, when we look at humans who have done this, there was a 92-year-old woman who got erythema. This happened on her eyelids as well as her legs. After she applied some self-made DIY aloe vera skin rescue salve to them. Now, it's important to remember that anyone who uses products, especially DIY skincare, has the chance of having things go wrong. Even with skincare that is preserved well and formulated, well, there is always the chance that someone will react negatively, which is again why you need to patch test. However, when things are formulated properly, they're less likely to cause those irritations because things such as the latex or any questionable compounds are normally taken out. But before we talk about the chemistry of some of these products and what you should be looking for when you turn and learn those ingredients lists, let's talk about why people are saying that aloe causes cancer, because there are some things that point to aloe causing cancer when it is ingested. Studies do show clear evidence of carcinogenic activity when aloe is eaten, especially in the gastrointestinal tract. They basically checked this and checked it again, and they found that people who are ingesting the whole leaf aloe vera, especially in smoothies or as a laxative, have this potential of getting cancers the way they found in mice. So at this time, it is not recommended that people eat aloe vera, especially the whole leaf. And in California, it's in line with Prop 65, listed as a dangerous substance. Which is again, why natural is not always safer and no, natural is not always better. Studies looked at this oral consumption and found that eating the whole leaf aloe vera along with the latex may have tumor promoting activities in humans. And that is not a joke, that is a study. And science should be spoken up for and taken seriously. So we know that we shouldn't eat it due to the increased gastrointestinal cancer risk, but what about applying it to the skin? We don't want to miss out on these amazing, healing, soothing properties of the plant, right? Especially since so many people love to use it after sunburns, and since it does have a lot of these properties that would be antifungal, antibacterial, healing, hydrating, etc. This is why it is important to look for skincare products that do contain real aloe vera and separate the helpful parts of the plant from the unhelpful parts of the plant. Again, at this time, I don't recommend applying aloe vera directly from the plant, just because it does contain that aloe latex. It can be very, very sticky, and you can't control things like the potency of anthraquinones or other compounds in the plant. But in skincare, we can take those beneficial parts of the plant, formulate them properly, and put them into something healing. However, if you go walk into a drugstore, like CVS, you'll look around and you'll find an aloe vera gel. 
Don't just read the front. I want you to turn and learn and actually look at what's put into that product by checking out the back. When you do, you'll see a lot of aloe products that in the ingredients list have mainly glycerin. We love glycerin. It is great for us. But if I'm buying aloe vera, aloe vera is not glycerin. This is glycerin with a little bit of aloe vera extract. And these products are what? $8, $14, $30. All you're buying is overpriced glycerin with a little bit of a scent. You can go get glycerin for $4.99 to $6.99. So you're not getting aloe. You're getting glycerin scented as aloe and a bunch of marketing BS. That's why when you turn and learn those ingredients, don't just search for glycerin, search for actual aloe. You want a product that mainly has aloe or aloe extract, which is extracted properly. This could be aloe, this could be aloe leaf extract, this could be aloe juice or aloe water. Holica Holica is another one of those skincare brands that Hiram got me hooked on and they actually use real aloe vera and they formulate it properly into soothing formulas. Not only have they mastered extracting aloe from an island in Korea and doing this sustainably and ethically with cosmetic chemistry, but they've actually won awards for their packaging as well. Um, and I have to say, I really don't care how a product is packaged. I just want to make sure the ingredients work for me. Um, but seeing as this really is like an aloe leaf is pretty cool. And the way that they've also created this is so that even when you have the cap open, product doesn't leak out or run out. It only comes out when you actually want it to. These have been dermatologist tested as well as proven to be safe and effective. And on top of that, they've been recognized as industry best sellers. So much that I've actually seen other brands try to create knockoff or counterfeit portions of these. Again, anytime any brand does anything amazing, someone just has to run out there and try to rip it off. It's so sad, right? And again, turn and learn those ingredients. When you do, you'll really notice a difference. The first ingredient here isn't glycerin. It's not water. It's actual aloe vera. This aloe soothing gel is 99% of the beneficial part of the aloe vera plant. And when we read those ingredients, it has aloe leaf juice. It has a flower extract. Then the third ingredient is centella asiatica, otherwise known as tiger grass, which is again, anti-inflammatory, promotes wound healing, very, very soothing to the skin. And then you've got things like corn, cucumber, cabbage, watermelon, again, all formulated in a way that's actually beneficial to the skin. There is under 0.5% fragrance in this product, and I want to make sure that people are aware of that because some people hate fragrance. But remember that fragrance can come from different places and it can have alternate uses, such as being a penetration enhancer to the skin. They even have a facial cleansing foam. It's listed here for $8.50, which is quite affordable for the amount that you're getting. Um, and again, the first ingredient isn't water, it isn't glycerin, it's actually this crushed aloe vera, this aloe vera leaf juice. This does have water a little bit more down the list, as well as some of those good and hydrating cleansers that are actually going to clean off the skin. And way down there, they actually have corn silk extract, which no, does not come from boiling worms. It's actually coming from corn. It's a silk-like material that doesn't have the cruelty, but that does have beneficial hydrating and skin supportive properties. All of Holica Holica's aloe products are also sourced from an island in Korea. I hope that I'm pronouncing this correctly, but it's called Juju or Jejiao. And it seems like this is the Hawaii of South Korea, but where they actually grow aloe vera and they do it sustainably in an eco-friendly manner so that they're not, you know, destroying ecosystems or wiping out native populations just to harvest this stuff for our skincare. It's actually done sustainably and in a responsible way. What I also found interesting when I was looking into and kind of dissecting the, the ethics, the marketing, and the procedures that go into this line is that they actually roll and squeeze out the aloe vera juice. And they do this in a process that is combined with mushrooms with hyphae in order to make sure that it's stabilized and safe for topical application. The other thing is that there is no ethanol used. Many times when you are trying to produce plant compounds such as aloe vera or such as essential oils, you have to use ethanol, a type of alcohol, to actually get, you know, whatever part of the plant it is you want out from the rest of the plant. And although that is a very common practice, they pride themselves on not using ethanol within their manufacturing, which again, as I started to dig into and dissect this line, I was looking for things wrong because I like to be an angry consumer, but I was actually really impressed with all of the things that went into this line and how they, you know, ethically and sustainably decided to create it. When Holica Holica formulates these products, they've removed the aloe latex, they've removed any of those compounds that could irritate or harm skin. And although you should still patch test if you're sensitive, they've actually created something that doesn't destroy the environment, doesn't ruin ecosystems, actually innovates when it comes to packaging and formulations, and they're at really decent prices, especially since you're getting so much of a product. This is also why natural isn't always better. If you were to just go grab some aloe naturally, again, that can vary based on where it's grown, different soil, weather conditions, 
conditions, etc. The brand is really taking on the responsibility to formulate this properly to protect you, the skin, and to give you the benefits without any of the harmful parts of the plant. The last time I shared my body care routine was gosh, what, probably four years ago? And although I haven't shared my body care routine recently, these have been a part of it. The aloe shower gel is great, especially along with my panoxyl for my pits. And what's nice is that it doesn't leave my skin feeling stripped or dry. I have used Castile soaps or other cleansers that although very good at removing the oil from my face, do have the tendency to leave my skin feeling stripped or dry, especially when it comes to the winter. So the fact that this is soothing, it actually imparts hydration while it cleans. And then because it has aloe, it potentially has some of those antimicrobial or antibacterial properties. Um, it leaves the skin feeling nice and it actually does the work it's supposed to. Also, I'm weird. I don't use shaving cream. <laughs> As you saw in a recent video, I shaved my legs for the first time since quarantine and I had to use conditioner because I ran out of shaving cream. I've actually used this shower gel as shaving cream recently and it works really darn well. It gives my razor a nice slip. If I do get nicks or little irritation, I'm hoping that this will help the skin heal up better. And because it's soothing, I'm hoping that it'll help with my razor burn, which is a chronic irritating condition for me to deal with. And again, one of my personal favorite things about this is that it is not sticky. Again, if you were to go use the aloe vera plant, make sure that you're patch testing. I mean, you do you. You know how I feel about DIY skincare at this point. But when we compare these side to side, the aloe has that natural latex. It is very, very sticky, could be irritating. This has absolutely no sticky residue that's left over. I'm also very particular with the products that I use, especially on my chest and back, because I am very acne prone, uh, especially I have acne all over my back skin. This is the Aloe Facial Cleansing Foam, but I've been using it on my back for my acne prone skin, and so far I haven't seen any breakouts, which you know other body washes tend to do to me. Um, so even though this is a face wash, I'm using it on my very sensitive chest and back, and I will keep you updated on how it's going. There are many cleansers, body washes, and even body lotions that leave my skin almost feeling itchy. I'm a little bit more sensitive, but I'm not the most sensitive person, yet there are a lot of body products. I don't know if it's the amount of fragrance they shove in there, I don't know if it's, you know, just what they're formulating with, but they have a tendency to irritate my skin. Um, I actually had a huge issue with my laundry detergent contributing to skin irritation and therefore my body acne. The brand actually claims that they have done clinical studies to prove that this relieves itchiness of the skin, and personally, hasn't made me itchy, and I have noticed it takes down a bit of redness since, hi, I've got erythema. So at the end of the day, yes, aloe vera when applied directly from the plant can be hard to control. Is it going to cause cancer? No, definitely, probably not, but it still can be irritating to some. And again, if you're applying natural aloe over a sunburn, the sunburn can cause cancer, which is another great testament to correlation not being causation. But again, natural aloe can be irritating to some, and that's why we have to both find and then trust reputable cosmetic companies who are actually going to formulate things properly and ethically to protect our skin and give it those benefits without all of that variability. That way we're able to reap and use the wonderful benefits of aloe without any of the potentially harmful side effects. And again, this is a perfect case of why natural and DIY is not always better. We need to speak up for science because I understand that reading medical studies or looking at these clinical trials can be very daunting to someone who maybe isn't skin intelligent or hasn't taken the time like you have to understand your skin, but just because it's intimidating or just because we don't understand it doesn't mean we should fear it. It means we should learn about it. And that's why you and I have to really stand up for science and speak up for science, turn and learn those ingredients lists, find out what's in our products so that we can choose the right ones and then be empowered by them. Overall, I've truly enjoyed these products. I do recommend you check them out. And if you'd like me to do a body care routine or something along the lines of what I do in the shower, I'm more than happy to take you through that. Overall, make sure that you take an aloe vera leaf or an aloe vera leaf shaped container and stab that like button until it changes color. Wow, a little bit violent in here, aren't we? <laughs> But go ahead and stab the like button and while you're at it, make sure that subscribe and the notification bell button have been hit so that when we do talk about body care or other things about cancer in your skincare products, you can get notified, you can get the skin science education, and we can all speak up and stand up for science together. Always remember to be beautiful both inside and out, and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.